Hi everyone. Welcome back to school. While you are away, technology keeps on improving. This video has been generated using AI. How and where do you see this tech being used? What could be the issues? Welcome to year 13. I wanted to start with this video about artificial intelligence because Google created an application where you can just simply type in a piece of text and it will recreate an image in exact detail. It's so realistic, but why haven't they actually released it to the general public? Because the data set that they were using to train the images had biases in them. A certain type of gender bias, a certain type of racial bias, and trying to be a bit more ethical, Google decided that that data set was not appropriate, so it's going to hold on to it until those biases are removed. And this sets the scene up for year 13. We're going to be looking at some of the topics that we covered in year 12, but in a bit more detail, artificial intelligence being one of them. How do these biases creep in? How do these systems work? What does it mean by things like hidden layers and back propagation and regression and all of those kind of things? So it's quite exciting. The quantum of the syllabus is actually smaller. You have eight units. And even though pseudocode is still present, you're not actually tested on that in paper four. Paper four is entirely computer-based programming paper, and we're going to be using Python as our base language for that. But let's start by looking at our first section, coming back down to the base of how computers represent data. So we're gonna be looking at section 13 of the syllabus, which is data representation, and we're going to start looking at subsection 13.1, user-defined data types. Okay, let's do a prior knowledge check. Do you know what data types are? Can you list some common ones? Can you think of a problem with them? So pause the video, take some time, and think about these three questions. Okay, most students will just quickly list some common data types, and they're going to be saying things like, Integer, Boolean, string, real, I know them. But what they struggle with is the definition of what a data type is. Now quite simply, a data type is basically a classification attributed to an item of data. And that determines the type of value it can store and how it can be used. For example, integer can store whole numbers and can be used in calculations, that kind of thing. And the problem with them is that they only do what the programming language actually states it can do. Now what if, as a programmer, you need to come up with a data type that can do multiple things? For example, you are creating a game and you need to create an inventory system which stores the name of a piece of equipment, maybe the cost or the hit points or an image, things like that. You can't do that with the base data types, but you can probably create individual components of that inventory system. For example, an inventory's hit points could be a variable, and you might have an array set up which uses the same type of data, and so on. What that programmer needs is a user-defined data type, a mechanism to create a custom set of data types which they can use throughout their program and perhaps in other programs. So let's start by looking at why we actually need user-defined data types. The first one is encapsulation. And encapsulation is basically the process of putting data and methods together as a single unit. Normally, this is used for classes and objects and things like that. But think about it this way. In our inventory system for that particular game, that particular character in the game, you will have a lot of different types of data types, like integer for hit points, maybe string or text for the, the name of the equipment, and you're encapsulating, you're bringing all of that different data types, all of those different data types together, and that's one of the reasons why we use it. And because each user-defined data type then exists as a complete entity, including you know default values, data definitions, and any particular constraints we put in there, this ensures uniformity and consistency. Because once you define this new data type, you may use it in other user-defined data types. For example, the inventory data type that you just created, which could consist of all these single variables, for example, could be used in a character data type. And 
As such, the same logical data type always ends up with the same definition. The inventory will be exactly the same for every single character that you use it in. And if you ever needed to change that inventory system, you just change the base class that you've just created or the base data type that you've created, and it applies to the rest of the characters as well. So it makes life pretty easy. Another reason why we use user-defined data types is reusability. For example, as a hierarchy of common data structures are assembled, these can be reused with many definitions, and that allows us to save coding time. And that means that we also ensure uniformity. For example, we just talked about that inventory system that we just created as a user-defined data type can then be reused for multiple characters or perhaps reused in multiple games as well. And that reusability of code is super important for saving the developer time. Another reason that we use user-defined data types is, of course, the flexibility they offer. You have the ability to create real-world data representations of whatever data you might want to store, and that allows whoever's creating this database, whoever's creating this piece of code, to model the real world as it exists. Now think about it, if we only had the base data types, we would be just limited to whatever the base data types allow us to represent, and that often individual sets of values. But creating these complex, custom user-defined data types, these allow us to model real-world situations. For example, you can take a vehicle, and a vehicle could be a car, it could be a bus, it could be a truck, and it could be a different type of truck, and it could be a different type of seat in the truck, different type of engines. All of those, as we mentioned, the hierarchy of data structures could be created so you could have classes and objects and more objects within those and then carry on creating these instances until you get to a pretty realistic model of how a vehicle would actually operate in the real world. So we're going to start by looking at the different types of user-defined data types that we can create. The first one is called a composite type and a composite type is like compound, it's made out of multiple base data types. So what that means is that a composite data type will have different categories of data types stored within it. So our inventory system, we could create a record, which would be this inventory system, which could have a lot of different types of base data types in there. For example, the name of the equipment was string, the number of hit points or the number of items that it can hold, the quantity perhaps was integer, and that's multiple base data types being used to create this inventory data type. Therefore, it's a composite data type. A non-composite data type, on the other hand, is made up of the same data type that is simply like an array where you can have all of the values of the same data type. So it's not a compound. And as such, it's a non-composite type. Now we're going to look at the second part of the user-defined data types subsection which is defining and using non-composite types. Now remember, non-composite types are data types that have the same base data type. And we also need to make sure that we know how we can define these. And two specific ones we need to know are enumerated, or enum, as is popularly known, and the pointer. Now remember, the pointer from stacks and queues and linked list normally is just an integer, a value that often defines the index or the next location of a piece of data. So we're going to be looking at these because they will only be contain one base data type. So let's start by looking at enumerated. An enum or enumerated type includes in its definition a list of all of the allowed values for the variables of that type. Now in pseudocode format, and yes there is a bit of pseudocode that sometimes you will need to use in paper three, a program about planets could use the type T planet. Now this particular enumerated type will have these planets in there, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and so forth. Whenever we want to define a particular planet, we can create a variable planet which will now be of the type T planet. Now one of the things you need to notice about an enumerated type is that it says enumerated, so it's numerical in a way. So the list has to be ordered. So when you look at type T planet, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, all of those are not strings. They don't have quotes around them. These must not be enclosed in quotes, otherwise you might as well just create an array of perhaps a string data type. 
Now these values that are enumerated are ordered and these are actually called ordinals. This means that they have an implied order of value. So Mercury comes first, then Venus, then Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and so forth. Now why do we use enumerated data types? Well, because they only allow the values that we, as the programmer or developer, define when we are making that particular data type. So the planet can only have the following values, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. It will not have any other value assigned to it. Now pointer is a data type which is used to reference a memory location. We use pointers in stacks, queues, linked lists, and a lot of different types of data structures. For us, it's used to construct dynamically varying data structures. Now you know that an array is normally a fixed data structure where you will have a lower bound and an upper bound. But think about stacks, queues, and linked lists, and this is where the pointer needs to be variable, so it needs to change. So the pointer definition has to relate to the type of variable that is being pointed to. So if you're pointing to an integer, then chances are you're probably going to be using the integer data type as well. So what do you think a pointer is? Is it composite or non-composite? Hopefully you've thought about it and you've decided it's non-composite because it's using one particular data type. You're not going to be changing the pointer from an integer to a string. It's going to be using the same data type throughout. So it is a non-composite, a non-compound data type. Now, how do you declare a pointer? How do you define a pointer actually in to the code? You start off with the type command. The type my pointer is going to be the pointer symbol integer. Now that pointer symbol or the hat symbol as it's known is quite vital because this identifies that this is a pointer data type that you're creating. So remember to include that in any pseudocode. Now once you define the type of this pointer, so I've made a pointer called my pointer, I can then declare any other variable as my pointer. So in this case, the integer pointer is an instance of my pointer. So I can use that as any other data type, just like string, integer, and so forth. So sometimes I also might need to actually access the value that is being pointed to by this pointer. So in this particular case, I will simply have a variable, in this case, value pointed to, and I will assign a value that is stored at that integer pointer location. And to do that, I just simply assign like a normal assignment arrow and the variable integer pointer and the hat symbol appears on the right hand side. This technique is known as dereferencing which means that do not store the integer pointer, but the value that the integer pointer points to. Now by now, you should know what the need is for user-defined data types, why we need to go beyond the base data types. What is the difference between composite and non-composite data types? And you should have some indication of how an enumerated data type works and how a pointer data type works in pseudocode form. Now the next lesson we're going to be focusing on coding enumerated and pointers using Python. So if you do have any question, please do let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in the next lesson.